All right, guys, now it's me. So, I'm Douglas Dutre, I'm French. Uh, I'm a front-end developer at Sphere. I'm the author of Esparta, and I'm an uh, all Angular UI contributor. And I'm a co-founder of Wonders. And I'm really happy to be here uh, in the staff with my dad. Uh, maybe you saw him. Uh, feel free to high-five him. He's been, he's been here since like 20, 14, some people here was there too, so really happy that he's contributing to, to Angular somehow. And there's one thing you have to know about me, is that I'm making a lot of mistakes. I guess it's like everyone, and I'm learning a lot from my mistakes. I'm actually le learning way more from my mistakes than what people can tell me or what I can with. And I'm employed today in Angular 1 to help people not making the mistakes I was making. That's my job today. But the thing is, my client is expecting me now that Angular 2 is out to have the exact same experience, to do the exact same thing. But, you know, I don't have this experience already. I didn't make so much mistakes already with Angular 2. So I try it out. And I make some pokes that was working. <laughs> but you know, I didn't know if I was making mistakes. And like it's the, my way to learn things, making poop, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I had to know if the expectation I have was actual facts. So this presentation is all about that, like my journey to try to, to discover what bad thing I could be doing with Angular 2. And I have a plan. Uh, I wanted to know like what Angular was doing in my application when it was doing something and why it was doing something. So I have a better no knowledge about like, uh, what's going on. And I have this picture that I'm programming some kind of free agents that have their own life and just Angular dealing with it. Even if I'm programming something, I don't really know how they're living. Sometimes they're eating, sometimes they're sleeping. But Angular is doing it for me, and I want him to do it for me. But I don't know. So I need to kind of hook inside. When I say bats, I mean components, right? Because from Angular 1 to Angular 2, everything is going components. And I want to know if um, I'm just making poops all around, you know? Because it's what Angular will be saying, like smiley face poops. So I decided to study the life of the components. Did you ever consider studying your life? Um, and I decided to go on and, and name it already. And like, I, I'm a fan of Batman, Arkham, game, so I named it like Angular, Cryptographic Sequencer, but yeah, it was way too long, so I renamed it to Angular but Scanner. What else? So what Angular but Scanner is doing? At the root of it, it's just hooking all the hooks. When you look at the documentation, if you want to know what a component is doing, you can access to some hooks. And so I decided that I will make something that will automatically hooks everything. How can you hook something? You just, um, you just say it, like in your components. You say, I want this ng on in it, and Angular will give it to you, like will run it when it's happened. But like, I need to automate, automatic this. Oh, sorry. Um, I need to know like how Angular know about this hook. So I look inside a compiler, 
and I discover this running meta resolver um, that's actually taking a type and taking the hooks and look on the prototype if you have um, like some ng on in it, something. Actually, I discovered it like way back, way back in the beta. And it gets renamed, and it gets put outside of the private part of the compiler. And now it's like the compiled meta resolver. It was out last week. Thanks, guys. And uh, it's taking way more than just directive. It's anything that can have meta data that is actually uh, that is passing through this function. So this is interesting. So this meta uh, wait components no compile meta data resolver. I have to go inside, hack it somehow, I don't know, like take this function, make, like find a way to make Angular not seeing that I'm doing anything and still doing something, right? Hacking the compiler, let's go. So <laughs> the good thing with Angular is that whatever you do, you still have an injector. So you can inject things. So uh, today, what you can do is like pass compiler options on your bootstrap uh, to actually inject something else when Angular, the compiler of Angular, want this compiler meta resolver. So here, I'm passing my bat scanner compiler meta resolver as the compiler meta resolver. Yes, this is this is two-day card. When I discovered all of this, it was way, way simpler because there was only like one injector for everyone. This was like full bootstrap. And now they are separating like the compiler and the application. So be careful. If you try to do it at home, it's not the same injector. So you end up just extending the, the basic compiler met metadata resolver and um, declaring this, this method and call it super, and it works. Great, it's doing nothing, but it works. So let's do something now. So what can we do? We can like scan for uh, looking at like what is this type we have. And for example, if it's a directive, we can ask Angular for all the hooks you know for directives and components and automatically like, uh, declare, this, declare them on the prototype. And that way, I end up with a lot of information. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I love. Yeah, I end up with a lot of information on the logs, for example. And through that, I, I was able to, to discover patterns. I try like to, to keep those data and process them. And like the first pattern, I discovered that like the data checking is going always top to bottom and back to top, I can like group them and have like bunch of, uh, of heavens but just give me like what happened in one cycle and another, et cetera. And just by like um, uh, naming somehow, like giving ideas to the instance of the components that was like running, I can figure out another pattern because each component is like checking each child, then each child, then each child, et cetera. So I can make some kind of stack that looks like a frame shot flame shot. Here I'm losing like the performance mark in the Chrome Dev tool. But it didn't it didn't like give me so much information still. I need I needed more. So I decided to make an, an Angular application to debug my Angular application. And I make an extension <laughs> that's using Angular in D3 and I try to like remake the um, Chrome DevTool 
but just with Angular and D3. And I tried to, to, to make it so I don't have specifically to, to wait. Um, I mean, when, when you are debugging, when you are looking at what Angular is doing and on the, on the timeline, normal timeline, Angular is so fast, so like it's taking maybe three microseconds, but whatever you do, you end up with a lot of gap between uh, each event if uh, checking detection. So I was like, maybe it's better if I want to be just Angular focused to cut the, the axe and just jump in time. That's what I'm doing here. So I, I publish it uh, as a Chrome extension. There's still things you have to do in your code, like uh, uh, I, I showed you um, to, to make it work. So you can uh, tell Angular to actually export what's happening uh, during the data checking. And the result, sorry for the slide, um, is that Angular is so fast that it's actually you making something with it that make it slow for me. Uh, so you have to fight your expectation that your code will be like performance with facts and you, I think, uh, must always preserve the data checking to be just Angular only. So to, to make the dev tool, I use a lot of request idle frame and I use the hooks to trigger my request for idle frames and use the idle frames to do a process and then use an idle frame like to, to, to ask for an animation so D3 can do something. I always try like to preserve the checking so it's like a canal of communication and rendering if, if I have some dub. But anything else, I try to put outside the data checking process so Angular is always fast. And I end up with this, for example, on an unchange, I can have data or not, and whatever I do, I will like process something. For example, in, um, in, in the dev tool, you can zoom, so there's no change of data, but you still have to render. Uh, there's, there can be new data that will come in, so you have to render. Um, I somehow, too, feel like now that I have some kind of naive data, actually. Just using hooks is not enough. It just like points for me in the timeline, and there's a lot of things that's happening between like the moment Angular is give you the hand inside those hooks. So maybe I should like go, go deeper inside uh, the compiler to, to extract more, more things. But another thing is like, um, I, made, I made a stack, but I'm, I was just guessing the depth of the components. I wasn't like using the wheel template or something. So it kind of looks strange when you compare the, the, the data you have inside my dev tool and inside the, um, the, the timeline. Another thing to answer the, the why is Angular is doing something, I definitely need to act inside the zone because it's always him that is triggering Angular data checking. So, um, for example, if you are inside um, the, um, the browser and you look at what Angular compiled from your components, you can see via, that there is a lot of things happening. You can see the hooks that you, you, asked, you asked for, but you can see other functions like this detect component child change that can really be useful to actually time how many times um, the detection of the contents of the child took, like, for real. Um, but it's way harder because it's some kind of code that is compiled from your code. So I today don't really know how to do it. Um, another thing is, like, bad scanner today is really, really opaque. My first situation was this timeline with the polynomial scaling on the time, and I really think that there is a lot of things to add to make it legit. Um, for example, it would be good to have things like what you can find inside the, the timeline, uh, like statistics around uh, your checking, 
how many times it took to check um, all your components, how many components you just check it. Um, like, uh, it would be good to like make some kind of aggregation of the statistics, selecting, selecting, selecting groups of uh, data checking to have way more statistics and know like what the difference between those two checks, for example. And I feel like it would be great to have some kind of um, component tree that um, answer the, the how much time I, I took to, to go through those components to these components. You can have the case like you're using a library where um, they might not use like on pool strategy and like you, you just discover that there's a lot of things happening, there's a lot of things being checked at that moment and it can be like faster to have some kind of visual uh, help to, to, to know what, which components do it what, uh, if you know what I mean. All right, so that's it for me. Merci beaucoup and enjoy the conference.